So what we've got for you today is uh, Montblanc's Master of Meisterstruck, L'Aubrac. Uh, L'Aubrac is a region in France where the collaborating company has uh, some of its factories. Uh, so let's see. This is the way I got the pen. Uh, it was the last pen that they had in stock. Uh, so it's the store display, sad to say. So this is a collaboration between Montblanc and Forge de l'Aguiole, which is another, well, which is the France region, uh, where they make specialty knives. This is one of, by far, one of the nicest books I've seen uh, for Montblanc pens. There's quite a lot of detail. It explains the collaboration, explains the history of L'Aubrac. Uh, and of Forge Laguiole. Uh, it's not often you find full, full color pages. Uh, and they also show you the limited edition version of the pens and the concept art. So you don't usually see that with, uh, with these types of descriptive books in Mont Blanc. And then of course the maintenance. Uh, all personalized for this particular pen, which is quite nice. And then of course the, the warranty. So, comes in a rather hefty box. Fake wood. Uh, plastic, but looks, looks rather fine for, uh, for what it is. Now being the store display, this is how I got it, wrapped in this, uh, this strange plastic. Uh, now this is a pen that is, uh, most fittings are silver, and when you get a pen from Mont Blanc that is mostly silver, it'll come habitually in a sealed plastic, uh, plastic protective case to protect it against corrosion and sort of tarnishing. Uh, this pen, since it's a store display, just came came like that in this, this ridiculous piece of plastic, uh, and it's been uh, quite used already in the box. Uh, now, usually when you buy a pen from Mont Blanc, they'll open the the box in front of you to verify its contents. Uh, this box was already open, and at the back there is a cavity where something obviously was placed. Not sure what. I've never been able to find out what, if anything, was placed here. Uh, if anyone can tell me, that would be quite helpful. Quite curious about that. Uh, so on to the pen. It is by far uh, my favorite pen. It's the one that uh, sort of brought me to Mont Blanc. When I was a child, my grandfather collected them, uh, but he always had the, uh, the sort of the Lagans. The, the Diplomat, uh, nothing sort of limited edition, and I've always sort of had a fondness for them because they were always associated with my grandfather. Uh, so a few years ago when I went into Mont Blanc, by, you know, sort of just window shopping, I saw this in the display case and I, I don't know why, but it, it sort of called to me and I sort of uh, found it to be absolutely fascinating. Uh, so even though it was the last one, even though it was the display model, picked it up. Uh, don't think they, they sell them anymore. Uh, this must have been 2015. I think they came out in 2011. Uh, so what makes this pen special is that unlike most Montblanc pens, there's no resin, no, uh, yeah, no precious resin at all except on the, the cap where the Montblanc emblem is uh, or the Mont Blanc emblem is made out of mother of pearl and embedded in the uh, the uh, the precious resin. Uh, I've used this pen as my daily pen for about a year uh, until I noticed that the uh, mother of pearl was uh, starting to wear out. Actually, it's. Uh, surprising to me. Uh, it was stored in a Mont Blanc pen case, just a regular etui, uh, and eventually it lost its luster. 
as you can see, the, the resin is still quite shiny, but the mother of pearl is flat uh, and you can feel sort of a, a difference with the, the resin being a bit further, a bit, uh, a bit proud of the, the mother of pearl. Uh, so, being a wooden pen, obviously, it's not as uh, not as resistant to corrosion, to light, uh, to humidity as regular pen, but I've had no issue with this. This is made out of the same type of ebony wood that they make woodwinds out of, clarinets, oboes, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's it's quite a quite another uh, curiosity on that on that side too. The fittings are silver, except for the the clip, which is platinum, which is, I don't know, it stands out to me as sort of uh, being a bit strange, considering that the rest of the fittings uh, develop this beautiful tone. Uh, the oxide layer looks looks quite nice and allows you to see really the detail quite, quite clearly. Uh, now, it's not a limited edition, so it's not numbered, but they do have the the emblem of La Forge, La Guiole, uh, that's, that's about all that really distinguishes it. Now, other than the, the wear down of the Mother of Pearl, which sort of surprised me, uh, there are a few problems with quality. You'll see here, uh, the pen barrel is a bit proud of the fitting. Enough in my opinion, to uh, warrant probably not passing a simple quality assurance inspection. It's visually, you see that quite quite quickly. Uh, so I don't know what happened there. I've not been able to get anything out of Mont Blanc in terms of answers as to whether they would be able to fix that or replace it. Uh, but it's sort of a surprising flaw of an otherwise rather well-made and expensive pen. Uh, obviously being a Mont Blanc, it just has the standard Mont Blanc uh, nib. Never had an issue with it. And of course it just writes, writes well enough. Uh, I've never had it serviced, but uh, it's never developed any, any problems. It's always worked. Uh, it's been pretty reliable. Changing inks isn't a problem. Uh, usually switch between blue and black, and that's those two colors are fine. Uh, I haven't used it now for maybe about four months. It's been in storage, uh, which is why the the oxide layer is sort of uh, a bit more prominent. Otherwise, when you use it regularly, uh, it stays quite shiny, uh, quite beautiful. Uh, of course, you can see the tip there where it's most polished. It's quite obvious. So there you have it, uh, Mont Blanc's Lobrac, special edition, not limited edition, but special edition. Uh, if you're thinking of getting one of these second hand, picking one up used or at an auction, definitely check the finish and the, the quality of the Mother of Pearl inlay. I'm not sure why mine is uh, sort of decaying. And definitely check to see if the barrel's been damaged. Usually, uh, they're quite robust. I've dropped it a few times without any consequence. Uh, but definitely, definitely check for cracks and fissures. And finally, check to see that the barrel fits actually with the fittings. This one, as you can see, sort of where the silver sort of uh, is equal with the barrel, it polishes. Whereas where the barrel is proud, it sort of uh, protects the, it shades the, the silver. I think that's that's about it. Uh, so now you know what to expect. If you pick one of these up used, you'll know what's in the box, uh, and you'll know if anything is missing, hopefully.